So I think we finally answered the question I posed in the discussion video, which I guess would be last week now for you guys. What the hell is the point of the Toby plot twist? It, we even call that a plot twist. It's more of like an identity twist. Those are two things are different, different things. Plot twist is usually typically an event, and identity twist is typically a personal relationship. But you know, we're splitting hairs. It's only the writing nerds care. Uh, the point of this identity twist is now we're set up in a situation where the audience has more information than the characters do. The audience knows how dangerous this character is. Characters don't know that. Like, you know, and so they, they timed it perfectly. So we, we knew this about Toby before the encounter. The only other thing that thing I think might be cool would be we show Toby and we think Toby's an idiot and he's been an idiot this whole time, right? Like at the end of an episode, they encounter Toby, right? And in the beginning of the next episode, or no, the, at the end of the episode, they reveal who Toby actually is. And you go, you're waiting a week, like, wait a minute, they're fighting a the great leader? That turns out that sub-bitch is a great leader? That would be like a kick in the pants. You know, six one half dozen other. I still think it's cool. And they know that he he's good defensively, at least. They, I don't think, we don't even know, like, what is he actually capable of. He's got somebody like Payne bowing down to him. You're my leader. Which means he has to be a power level above that. Which means he could take out Payne if he wanted to. In fact, I think he, Payne's implied that the great leader is the one who taught him this ability in the first place. Whatever the hell it is he's doing. Paint, or the, the, the great leader taught him that. So if I teach you this powerful technique, it's the old joke, uh, not really joke, but the observation is, I taught you everything you know, but I didn't teach you everything I know. So you're always a little wary of your teacher, right? Like you may know a little bit more than you do, right? So anyway, so the great leader has got to be more powerful than pain. We know how awesome pain is. So we don't know exactly what we can do, but we know we can rock and roll. And we know the characters are in danger. And so that is the narrative purpose of that identity twist. It all, it's all coming together. And I trust the show. It's just the, uh, first hearing it through via a comment rather than like realizing it myself, it sounded really dumb. And and it made no sense, but like it's really come together. I've been watching these episodes since yesterday. And so I can't I remember what episode I'm on now as far as like how many I've seen now. But it's been around 10. And the ebb and flow of these episodes and seeing it all kind of come together from that plot twist, which was only an uh, episode or two removed of when I had stopped. So in the chronology of the show, it's only been 10 or 11 episodes since we first got that reveal. About three months if you're watching it week to week. So it's, they've given you time to, for it to sink in and now it's paying off. That's a reasonable amount of time. Expecting people to wait a couple years for an identity twist like this to pay off is probably asking for too much. But they didn't do that. You know, the show it shows that they're they're competent and they can handle it. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. We got three fights, two of which matter. The other one is just for the lols, right? <laughs> you know which is which. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Maybe I'll start um, guessing how long I think the code opens will be. They're all average between five to seven minutes. I'm going to predict four and a half minutes for this one. <laughs> Flashback. It's been a long time since we've done this, and we're going to get the full course of flashbacks. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure this is the last day they were cool with each other before the, the massacre, right? If I remember right. I remember this stuff, but I can see people if this aired <clears throat> if this aired five or six years ago, I can see people like you know. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. This isn't the day of the massacre. This is the day they depart, and he goes and turns evil. It's what this is. Okay, that's right. I remember that. I guess I need to refresh her too. Not that it matters. I don't think. You really just want to show that what they had before everything went bad. <laughs> Dumbass. Oh, shit. Jesus. So much for that. <laughs> um, 
I'm recording this the day that the NFL draft starts, right? And so there's a lot of like bets and stuff. And you know, the over under is a big thing. I, I, over under is my favorite bet in sports. Because it's simple. It's 50 50. Yeah, 50 50 odds, right? I like 50 50 odds a lot better than this team will win by six points, right? Because <laughs> that's a lot harder to do. So I'm obsessed with over unders. And, you know, I would have smashed the over on four and a half minutes and I would have lost this bet. Guess we have time in the spirit of all that. Who do I think is going to win these various fights? Well, I think the great leader is going to delay them. I don't think there's going to be a victor in that fight. He'll delay them long enough for this other stuff to transpire. So that's a that's a win for him and it's, it's a loss for us. But, like, I don't think anybody's going to die necessarily. Maybe one minor character or something. Uh, the girl who's in love with Naruto may die or something. As far as the, the pointless fight, that's going to be a draw because they're just screwing around. As far as this other fight, is this it? Like, where are we? Um, 135 out of 500. I, I, I wouldn't have thought that Arun Chamorro would be gone yet, right? So who the hell knows? So I guess I, anything's on the table. I can't use the timing of when this is in the series to say one, one way or another. So I'm just going to have to pick the fight. I think Sasuke's going to kick his ass and kill him. That's why I, I just said it. I wouldn't think so, narratively speaking. I think it's too early in the series. But the show has proven they don't give a shit about that. So let's just pick, right? So that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> My plan worked again. So do you think the voiceover actor for Young Sasuke did that themselves? Or was it uh, pitch shifted to sound younger? I've done it both ways as a producer. And so he did. I don't think you understand yours. I don't remember this part. I, I remember it happening. I don't remember the details of the conversation. <laughs> Not as much as you will, brother. Not as much as you will. But anyway, um, you can pitch shift an adult voice to make him sound like a kid. Or the actor can do it themselves. This feels pitch shifted. He already knew what he was thinking when he said that. Not really. Yeah. I remember this dude. Doesn't one of them end up dead? Oh no, they're somebody already ended up dead and, and they're that's what it is. They're confronting him about it. Yeah, you'll just get the special ass whipping. <laughs> oh, he's a terrible card player. Oh. What's your point? <laughs> we 
We have a police force? Ray, oh shit. I didn't even think about that. Are you guys qualified for interrogation? I don't think you are. I'm going to send Mutt and Jeff to interrogate this guy. By the way, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> They're going to. <laughs> That's what you get for talking shit. How dare you? Idiot. <laughs> Very good point, sir. You're writing checks your ass couldn't cash. Your mistake. Why are you the spirit carrier of this investigative unit? You seem like a moron. He is reading them for filth. Oh, this is awkward. They were the ones talking shit. Yeah, I had to... Love that angle. You make me nauseous, man. Your eyes are too big. With you and who's army? <laughs> Give me the order to get my ass kicked again. You may be mad. That is that easy, huh? That's his dad, right? Yeah, you know, the one in the green. That's what I thought. I thought you might just be like a watch commander or something at first. <laughs> They're hiding in the shadows. Not really so much, but a lot of people seem sus on him, you know? You ever see the original Amityville Horror 2? There's a lot of parallels between that movie and this storyline. You should check it out. It's an old movie. So there's a good chance you haven't seen it. You might like it. It's the old concept of the evil being within the house that you know we think our house is safe, right? The evil's already inside. Yeah, that's right. Talking shit. Be 
be hard to get up there and it's even harder to maintain your balance up there. I can't remember. We, they showed him doing the practicing. I can't remember what he was practicing. It wasn't at the lake, right? We're trying to do something with the fish. Well, this is awkward. Ow. I like how they're doing this. The directors are great, bro. I don't think this is a note for note repeat of the original airing of this. It feels like a remix. I could be completely wrong because it's been a while since I've seen it. But the direction is great. It's only been about 400 episodes in the making here. It's an interesting question. Was he ever a good person? Or was he just BSing the entire time, right? Yeah, I'm going to go my own way. I'm going to kiss evil ass for two years rather than kill Naruto. It's a good manga. <laughs> Why do I have to be wretched? This is for all the marbles. I don't think we're getting part three of these two. Sup, brah? <laughs> That's right.
boring. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> Their quick movement is always creepy, man. He got down there fast as hell. <laughs> There's nothing more embarrassing than going on a two-year revenge journey and then losing when, when you meet your brother again. That would be embarrassing as hell. Shit. Jesus. It's hard to even tell what the hell's going on. That was just the opening salvo. He wants it too much, man. That's, that's his uh, disability here. Shit. Then again, anything we see, we can't believe. So, like, it's clearly a clone, right? I thought he was giving him the finger there for a second. <laughs> it wasn't going to be that easy. <laughs> That's what I thought. They had me going there for a second. For a second, I contemplated the possibility that was it. It's like, I was going to roast the show if that was it. But like, no, no chance. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I want a sword in you first. This one I might believe. I still don't, though. <laughs> I might believe this one. You never know at this show. You got his hand ready. <laughs> I'm killing anybody who knows it. Probably a great leader. Ow. I've heard that name before. It's uh, some ancient warrior, right? That pissed you off. Now you have. Yes. Is that the, the great leader's actual name? Interesting. They, I know, like, somewhere in this batch of episodes I've seen, they, they mentioned that name there, and they showed some ninja, right, real quick. And they seemed, I think, I think they implied that was a great leader. That's probably who we're talking about here. Well, I gotta say, anticlimactic as hell. But 
we were going to end up at this place regardless. I, you know, it's kind of interesting. They wouldn't take a full episode of these two fighting various like cool ass fight you know, shenanigans, and then you end up here because this is the point of the story. It's like the fights are just a device, right? You know, it's just, it's just action. It gets us from point A to point B. You know, you're trying to get rid of an obstacle. You're trying to kill an enemy. You're trying to, in the worst shows, you're just trying to titillate the audience and waste time, like sex scenes. The same thing, just as pointless. So you need the uh, the action to have a point, and sometimes you'll subvert expectations. You know, Indiana Jones just shoots them instead of like trying to fight them, because you just want to get to the damn point. You know, the point is the information. But considering how long this has been built up for that to be all it is, I guess really like the point of that, the, the anticlimax can have a point. Sandman had a very famous anticlimax when he went to go fight Satan in hell, right? Remember a lot of fans being pissed off about that at the time. The point of this anticlimax climax could be this is just how powerful Sasuke is now. See, I thought it was going to be the opposite. I thought he was, he was so hyped up. He had been thinking about this for so long that... He would underperform. The pressure would be too much, and then it would take him a minute to get his equilibrium. That's how I thought the fight was going to go. It would take him a while to get to his equilibrium. For him to just be dispatched this quickly, that's pretty impressive. I'm a little, I, I'll admit, I'm disappointed, but completely understand where the show's coming from, and I don't think it's a problem, like, at all. I actually kind of admire it. I wonder how fans felt <laughs> watching this week to week for years and you get this. <laughs> it's just, they must have been pissed. You know, but again, we can get caught up, especially as kids, we can get caught up in thinking the fighting is the point. It's not the point. You know, and a lot of times some of these fights you'll see, it's the learning and the ingenuity and the thinking, hey, I've got a great idea and this is how you win. That's what matters in the fight. Not, let's just stand here you know what I'm saying? Like, or, or clink our little lightsabers together for five minutes, you know, dance around, flip around, you know, flip your penis and, you know, all this stuff. And you just, you're just kind of twirling around and you're clashing your, your lightsabers. And then finally you get the person like, okay, you know, like that's not really the point, but we kind of, you know, we like the lightsaber duels, you know? Yeah. Disappointing, but like, you know, hopefully you understand where I'm coming from. It's not a negative choice to show at all.